next up, um, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Nina Baker with her talk, Once Upon a Time, There Was an Engineer. Uh, Nina is going to talk about uh, imagined engineers in print and fiction and their presence or lack thereof. Just to uh, introduce her, um, uh, Nina has had a varied career, having become a merchant Navy deck officer on leaving school and later taken an engineering design degree in her 30s from the University of Warwick. She then gained a PhD in concrete durability from the University of Liverpool and has lived with her family in Glasgow since 1989, working variously as a materials lecturer in further education, as a research administrator and until 2017 as an elected city councillor. Now retired from all that, her interest in promoting STEM careers for girls has led her to become an independent researcher, mainly specialising in the history of women in engineering. And I understand, Nina, that Kira is going to be progressing your slides for you today. Um, so yes, lovely to have you and uh, looking forward to hearing what you have to say. So when you're ready. I'm just setting up the slides. There. Thank you. Um, as Matthew said in the introduction, normally um, my main interest is researching um, the history of women in engineering. So principally, I'm looking for the stories of dead but real engineers. Um, and the reason I do this is to make engineering for and by women more visible to the general public. Um, however, very often um, the talks I'm giving are to people who are already in engineering. And one of the problems about making engineering more visible is that it doesn't really exist in our cultural environment, hardly at all. I mean, it's almost like a uh, a secret pleasure done behind factory doors and not not seen by the public. Um, so I thought I would look to see who there might be in the fictional world as well as the real world. Um, this picture um, is how I would like to imagine myself in my mind's eye. I'm drop dead gorgeous. I'm busy tinkering with things. Um, I'm, I'm none of these. Um, this woman is Dr. Gillian Holtzman from the 2016 um, film of, of Ghostbusters. And you may well have seen this film. Um, she, she is portrayed as a, uh, a physics um, doctor um, who becomes um, the main maker of, of contraptions for trapping ghosts. Next, please. So I don't know anything about literature. Um, I know perhaps a little bit more about film and certainly I'm a great aficionado of DVD box sets of this, that and the other. So the my first port of call was to go googling for TV pr program series on different um, types of occupation. I'm sure we all realise that the entire spectrum of the criminal justice system in all countries you can think of well represented by a fictional series, um, everything from prisons up to law courts. Similarly for medicine, um, I should imagine that everybody who watches TV has a very clear understanding of what every grade of medical person does, um, at least in the fictional world. Next please. But when you put, when you ask Google for TV programs about science, you mostly get non-fiction offerings. Um, of that top row, only Battlestar Galactica um, is a fictional thing, and that really comes within science fiction rather than fictional science, in my view. And if you look for TV program series about engineering, you don't get any fiction at all. Fascinating though, all those programs probably are. Next, please. So then I went Googling for fictional engineers, and it will not surprise you perhaps to learn that uh, the, the, the top 10, the top 11 offered uh, by Google returns uh, are all male. Um, some of them are more engineering -y than others. For instance, I would not have normally included Doctor Who 
Um, I probably would only just about have in included um, uh, Dr. Brown from Back to the Future. I probably wouldn't have included Mark Watney. And if you go looking for female engineers, all you're offered is, is women portrayed in science fiction. And in, in a way, that's a quite appropriate because my starting point for this was actually a fondness for um, Professor Jocelyn Peabody. Um, and you need to be of a certain age to appreciate this. But jo Dr. Jocelyn Peabody was the only female character um, in the Dan Dare cartoon series from the Eagle comic um, in the middle of the 20th century. Um, she's partly portrayed as a scientist, but she's also occasionally said to be an engineer and to have designed Dan Dare's spaceship, the Anastasia. And this, is, this uh, couple of um, scenes are from when she first arrives in the, in the first episode. and Everybody's a bit taken aback to find that they've been lumbered with a woman. Next, please. So there are various genres I went looking for. I know nothing about literature. Um, I had to rely heavily on the, the uh, help of family, friends, and the kindness of strangers on the internet to find things. Um, but these are some of the genres that I should be looking at. For the sake of time, I'm not actually going to cover um, non-English language um, books, but I did find a lot in, in Russian and some in German. Next, please. So starting with picture books for little kids, if you put Girl Engineer into Amazon, um, you get quite a lot of uh, small kid picture book biographies of real women. Uh, particularly uh, NASA women and people like Ada Lovelace. Um, but you also get these, which are, are stories about uh, girls being engineers. Of most of the ones I'm showing you, they are rather self-consciously making stories that are um, rather, rather sort of overtly in your face. I'm a girl. This is a story about me as a girl being an engineer. Uh, I rather prefer the one on the right, The Most Magnificent Thing, which is also delightfully uh, read on YouTube. And the thing about this book is that it isn't so in your face. It's about a little girl who gets things wrong. Um, she's trying to make something. It doesn't work. And she tries and tries again. Each one's slightly better. And eventually she makes what she's aiming to make. Um, so it's, it's much more accessible, you know, for a little girl who might be encouraged to start tinkering with a view to one day being an engineer. Next, please. Then we have the tomboy. Um, and the tomboy features in quite a lot of um, 20th century stories for girls. The, the example I, I'm showing you here is from the very popular Noel Streetfield book, Ballet Shoes, which is about uh, three girls, three orphans who are adopted. Um, and put through um, ballet training. Only one of them ultimately becomes a ballet dancer, another one becomes an actress. But the, the, the middle one, Petrova, is always a tomboy. Um, and this sort of crops up from time to time. And I'm going to read you a short extract um, where it's explained about how she gets to all the ballet dancing stuff that she's not really that interested in. It was Sundays that saved her. After morning church, she went straight to the garage, put on her jeans, and though only emergency work was really done on Sundays, the foreman always had something ready for her. Very dirty and happy, she would work until they had to dash home for lunch, and afterwards occasionally they came back until tea time, when they washed and popped across the road for lions, but usually they went on expeditions in a car. And this is... The thing that gets her through, and at the end of the book, um, when their guardian turns up for the first time, it's decided that she alone will live with him and they will, li they will buy a house near an aerodrome so that she can learn to fly. Um, and in fact, if you go on to um, the fan fiction uh, site, um, Archive of Our Own, otherwise known as AO3, you'll find some 30 odd stories relating to Petrova where people who like the character have to try to continue her story into the future. And several of them, because this is a pre-war book, several of them have her becoming 
um, a pilot with the other women of the air transport auxiliary ferrying aircraft. Other authors of the same period often had uh, tomboys in their stories and, and George in The Famous Five by Enid Blyton is another very well-known one. Next, please. Also from the mid 20th century, um, a very particular genre that came up um, during the 40s and continued up into the early 70s were career novels, both for boys and girls. And for this, I'm indebted to Kay Clifford, who is the expert on these, and that's her book in the top left, where she talks about career novels for girls. Um, they are mostly about nurses and teachers, but there are a few which touch on engineering. And by far and away, the most realistic is this one, Anne in Electronics. And it's clear that the, the author um, made use of must have talked to women who were involved in a technician training scheme that was running in British industry at the time in the 1960s, explicitly for well-educated school leavers, not, not people with degrees, because the description of what Anne experiences is absolutely spot on with the scheme as it was run. And most excitingly, she not only marries a fellow apprentice, but she stays on after her marriage to continue working and become a senior researcher in an R&D department in the factory. She also gives a talk to the Women's Engineering Society. Eve at the driving wheel from the same series is much less enterprising and I think barely qualifies to something that gives career advice to women, let alone girls thinking they might like to drive for a living. Crazy Mary is an American sort of coming of age book. It's set partly at the end of high school and first year of community college. This girl doesn't really know what she wants to do and it's only in the very last few pages that she decides that actually engineering is her thing. But these were around and maybe they influenced some people. Next, please. Going back in time a bit, um, I thought I would find more books about uh, heroic munition workers um, from the two world wars. In fact, I found very few. I'm now told that there may be more American ones. These, these three are all British. Uh, both Munition Mary and A Girl Munition Worker, as you can probably tell from the cover designs, are from the First World War. The engineering barely features at all. That Both of them are basically sabotage thrillers for girls. Um, the one on the right, Feud in the Factory, is a much better deal in that Lorna Lewis, the author, had actually worked in a factory making aeroplane parts as depicted in the book, which has rather nice illustrations of, of women actually doing engineering work. She may, this book was published in 1944, and I think she probably had access to um, a, a non-fiction book um, called War Factory, which was published by the Mass Observation Project the year before, which was about um, a mass observation observer who was placed in uh, a parts factory for the airplane industry. Um, and in the introduction to the book, the um, director of mass observation makes this comment about factory life in print. It says, considering the vast part industry plays in Britain, there are remarkably few modern books about daily factory life. Even industrial novels are rare. This has indeed been true over, for over a century. Since the war, thousands of writers have told of evacuees in the village, heroes in the Blitz, airmen and sailors, girls in government departments. There's hardly anything worth reading on the fitter or the foreman, the conscript girl, the volunteer housewife or the labourer. So it's interesting. So he was writing in, in 1943 and frankly, it's barely changed. Next, please. There are quite a lot of books in which engineering plays a sort of passing part, what I call incidental engineering. There's a lot of very popular, um, I consider them pulp fiction saga stories in the library. Um, the Shipyard Girls series by Nancy Revel has many volumes. Um, I have to say that actual shipyard work barely features at all, particularly in that one, which was the only one I could bring myself to read. 
Mar Margaret Dickinson um, has sort of similar saga stories. This one, the Brooklands Girls, I thought was going to be about girls in motor racing based on the cover. Um, there is only one sentence in which a car is even mentioned, um, so not so much. Um, we don't get all that much more. Um, in the very earliest example I have been able to find, which is George Bernard Shaw's uh, play, Mrs. Warren's Profession, written in 1893. It's the story of a girl called Vivi Warren, the daughter of Mrs. Warren. And the story goes that Vivi was um, a top mathematics student at Cambridge at a time when, of course, girls couldn't get degrees. But she, her exam results put her level with the third wrangler of the year. And for people not familiar, that means the third from the top between all the men and women who took that exam. Um, and the story is that Vivi has had the very best upbringing, um, somewhat sheltered. Um, paid for by her mother's profession, which is as a high-class prostitute. This was such a scandalous story that it was banned by the Lord Chancellor, and it was another 10 years before a performance was put on at all from which this photo comes, and even that was for a private club. Um, it is nowadays performed a bit more often. But she is portrayed as a mathematician who earns her living by doing the maths for engineers, so she's a kind of contract mathematician for engineers who, who knew that need that done. The other two books, um, Claire Tristan, Arctic nurse. Again, she does. She mentions that um, as as a nurse at an Arctic station, she has to be able to run and maintain the diesel generators. So very much a part. Of it. There's a bit more in Twins on Trial. This rather charming uh, boarding school story. Um, where the girls turn up at a new school and are thrilled to discover that it has um, a workshop and an actual mechanics instructor where they can learn how to fix engines and so on. But in none of these is engineering an important part of the story. Next, please. Taking my um, remit sort of slightly over the edge into science, um, looking at uh, women engineers who were detectives. Now, Fiona Erskine is unique. She's writing at the moment. She is herself a chemical engineer and her two stories, um, Chemical Detective and the new one, Chemical Reaction, are about um, a woman, Jack Silver, who is a kind of female James Bond with science, um, who is portrayed as a chemical engineer who solves problems and blows things up and all the rest of it. I like, I like those books a lot. Top right, B.B. Jordan um, is a life scientist who has written these three stories about um, a, a genetic engineer, Dr. Celeste Braun. Also great stories written by a scientist about a woman scientist. Not really quite engineering, but still um, the, engine, the, the, the science is front and center as it is with, with Fiona Erskine. Marjorie Allingham's um, detective novels um, are a bit peripheral. Um, they are from before the war mostly, um, and they feature a woman called Amanda Fitton, who is an aeroplane designer and an arist aristocrat. So, you know, obviously hardly ever has to do any actual work, but the aeroplane factory is mentioned. Um, Amanda features in several of the novels, but mainly these two are the ones where she has the biggest role and where engineering is actually mentioned. Next, please. So then we come to film and um, we're still struggling, but I love this one. Um, the Great Centrinian's train robbery, which was produced only three years after the real Great Train Robbery. And here in the picture on the left, which I'm afraid is a screen grab off, off a YouTube version of this lovely film, you can see a little girl, probably meant to be 11 or 12 years old, a Centrinian, typical Centrinian schoolgirl, in that whatever it is her father does, she knows how to do it too. Now, usually it's pretty nefarious stuff, like r running a casino or a pub. But this little girl's father is a train driver, so naturally she knows how to drive a steam train, and Julie does so. So I rather like her. Um, next, please. Science fiction is far and away the biggest source of women as engineers. Um, the 
Isaac Asimov's robot books introduced us to Dr. Susan Calvin, and the top left shows her in her principal role as a robot psychologist. But in the film of iRobot, produced more recently, Susan Calvin is shown as doing more technical stuff as well as the psychology stuff. So I have included her for that reason. Top Right is one of my favorite films. Now I have to say it's entirely in Russian. There are no subtitles, but it hardly matters. It's called Space Voyage and it was made in 1935. Um, and it was the first Russian language Soviet era um, space film. You can see it on YouTube, very enjoyable. The visuals are amazing. This is Marina. Um, she is engineer in charge of designing this um, spacecraft, and you see her going up and instructing people and tinkering things. But she does go into space. She's a cosmonaut as well, played by a woman called Kay Moskalenko. Um, I love that film. Uh, just absolutely great. Um, bottom right, we have Tintin Kirano, who is the assistant to the um, the, the brains character in the Thunderbird series. She's actually the daughter of the um, Tracy family butler, but she is a technician working for Brain, so I count her as a fictional female engineer. Next, please. Of course, we can't avoid Star Wars. Um, however, we did have to wait till the, the final three episodes, um, uh, episode seven, eight and nine, um, before we get a woman I could really consider to be doing anything approaching engineering. This is, of course, Ray Skywalker, who is described as a skilled mechanic, pilot and junk trader. And here we see her um, in, in her home um, sorting out some junk. But more delightfully, there's a, a, a spoof series um, called Pink Five, uh, in which Stacy, who is a California Valley girl with the, the, the California sort of ditzy valley girl um, vibe uh, about her, more interested in her lipstick than her thrusters. Um, and that they've done little short films of, of her portraying female characters from each of the, the Star Wars films, and they are absolute hoot. And this is her in the first one where she is a, a space pilot. Next, please. But famously, Star Trek, it is said by lots of people now successful in, in NASA and elsewhere, that Lieutenant Uhura, the communications officer from the original series played by um, Michelle Nichols, was their inspiration. I mean, she's portrayed as a, as a communications officer and doesn't really do any tinkering with the radio, but she was seen as being the only person, the only woman represented at that time doing anything even slightly technical. Since then, we've done a bit better. Um, that strip of, of, of images in the middle is of the chief engineers of various of the Starship Enterprises, including Berlana, um, who is the chief engineer um, in the Voyager series. On the right, we see Lieutenant Anara, who is um, a second engineer uh, in Deep, Deep Space Nine. Um, and you see her actually doing quite a bit of, of sorting problems out and doing actual engineering, make, proposing solutions and so on, which I, I quite like. I'm a great aficionado of Stargate, um, and in Stargate we have another physician turned, um, another physicist, I should say, not physician, another physicist turned engineer, Samantha Carter. Um, and here you see her with a little girl, um, a prodigy, um, and they are both uh, fixing a piece of equipment. And you see Samantha Carter doing a lot of fixing of equipment and, and designing of new equipment, actual practical engineering. And bottom right in this picture, we see um, Kaylee Fry, um, who is the chief engineer on board the spaceship Serenity, um, which uh, was in the, fire, the Firefly, Firefly series and also a film of the same name. And you see her, she's portrayed as a rather sweet, quite girly girl in her way, but she's always just sort of slightly smudged and she's down there in the engines fixing stuff all the time. Definitely an engineer. Next, please. So finally, um, I want to come to, um, you know, so why this even matters. Um, as 
Tom Harrison, uh, the director of, of mass observation, pointed out in the book War Factory, even then, in the 1940s, it was remarkable to him that there was no depiction of people working in industry. 25 years later, um, this American civil engineer who also um, did quite a lot of work on the education of engineers, Samuel Foreman, who is very elderly but still alive, um, he was looking at the same thing. He thought engineers should have a liberal arts education. And part of this book about engineering and the liberal arts, which he wrote in 1968, is about literature, um, the engineer as the protagonist in fiction. Now, he was only looking and finding the tiny number of male um, examples. Um, and I, I've had, charmingly, he, 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 as I say, he's still alive. He, we've exchanged a few emails. and He's been very helpful in sort of making suggestions. But there are very few examples um, of male or female um, in any genre other than science fiction. Next, please. Although this um, is Engineer Sunset, who is a female engineer um, from a video game called Dead Space, about which I know absolutely nothing. But it's traditional to end a talk with a sunset. So this is the sunset woman. Um, and I would be delighted to be told of any other example that anybody might have stumbled across in any language. Um, because I think that until we make um, engineering visible in fictional form, as well as in serious form, we'll be fighting an uphill battle to make it seem um, an interesting occupation for our young people. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. Very interesting. It's nice to have the popular culture perspective. I think we have a couple of questions, um, but I, I've got a couple myself. Um, one of which is, um, you mentioned that uh, of a certain type of, of uh, novel um, or, or work, there's uh, more in America uh, representing female munitions workers. Um, I think over here it was, uh, was it labor dilution. I'm just wondering, is there, is there an appreciable difference in American culture and British culture towards uh, female engineering in fiction? Not really, no. I mean, several of the other examples, particularly in film, of course, were all American. Um, no, I wouldn't have said there was any difference, really. And um, well, I haven't seen those particular examples. I've only been told about them by an expert um, who got in touch. But um, well, I would be surprised to find that they were significantly different from the British examples. I'll uh, hand over to Emma if uh, we have any more questions. Hello, yes, um, uh, Maura Cross had uh, had said, I think ironically, how many female engineers wear white coats and glasses? Um, that is a fairly <laughs> typical, and I don't know if they do it to men as well, actually, so I don't know, but yeah, that does seem like a very stereotypical. Um, and she also commented that there always seem to be lab assistants in bad um, horror movies, <coughs> which is also extremely yeah. true. Um, yes, that, that's a valid comment, yes. Yeah, let's, try and, let's try and break out of that, that particular stereotype. Um, Colin Sanderson had said, I recently acquired your life of Hilda M. Lyon for the Art Science Library in Edinburgh, for which thank you. Um, I have known Samuel Florman's book for many years and would love to send him an email. Uh, might you forward one? So I don't know if you want to go into the questions and maybe get in touch with Colin there and maybe have a chat with him in the, the questions or pop him okay. in. Email yeah. Right. Well, I'll do that in a minute. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, those were all the questions. So. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. If you have one more. Oh. Has come through. Oh yes. Yeah, sorry. A couple more. Oh yes. Yeah, sorry. No, it's just popped up. Um, <laughs> could you say anything about stereotypes you've encountered and changes you would like to see in how female engineers are portrayed? Oh, we were just talking about that. Yes, from Sarah Baines. Uh, how long have you got? <laughs> uh, I mean, that is essentially why I, I do what I do. Is is to kind of help normalize what people think of as an engineer. It is getting a bit better, but it is still the case that even people who know better, um, when they think of an engineer, are still conjuring up somebody in a boiler suit with a spanner in their hands. Um, and it's a, it's a cultural thing quite particular to um, the, the Anglophone world. Um, it's not true elsewhere. Um, it's 
uh, that there is no problem with um, stereotyping or gender division in um, the Middle East, the Far East, um, the, in those countries that they're baffled by the gender divide here. Um, and those are countries with very often Muslim majority countries where you would not expect women to be to be having those types of opportunities, but um, well, they I mean, far... Sorry? It's called Western binary. I mean, because we came up with it and we think it's normal, but the rest of the world doesn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, a, I sometimes use a, a, a graph of, of where Britain stands in all of this, and we are bottom for percentage of women in engineering in Europe and eighth from the bottom in the world. So. But I, you know, I think all of these things, you know, as well as role models and all the rest of it, is part of trying to break the stereotypes. Um, there's a really good question um, coming from Gordon Tate uh, about uh, about Ripley. I hadn't even thought about Ripley. Ellen Louise Ripley from the Alien films is going to obtain a master's in engineering from the New York Aeronautics University. Hmm. Um, okay, I will put her. I, I can't remember if she's in my database, but if she's not, I will stick her in. She's very. I, mean, I have I have about eighty people in my database, so um, yeah. She's particularly interesting because she was meant to be a man. She was written as a male character. Um, and, and I now can't remember why exactly they cast. The group. I mean, those movies yeah. wouldn't have been movies yeah. about. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, uh, and more across again, saying I've just got an engineering company history from the 1940s, which mentions its first female engineering director, and she'll forward on the details. <laughs> Uh, I will be in touch with Morag. We're, we're in contact. Oh, good. Um, oh, uh, from Sue Jane Taylor. What about the Netflix series Away, US production where the women in command saved the crew several times on their journey to Mars? Um, I just watched that, actually. Um, yes, she's a commander and there is another uh, female character in the crew. I can't remember what she does, uh, but that, you might want to look that up. Um, well, it's, pro it's, probably I should. I, I actually cancelled my Netflix subscription a few months ago because I wasn't watching anything but everybody's raving about a way so perhaps I will revive it again <laughs> it was good it was good actually um yeah I did enjoy it. I, I just watched um somebody else just did something about going to Mars I oh, know it's a two season thing with um it's half based in reality half National Geographic um documentary uh, I think it was maybe on Prime, and it was also about going to Mars. I'll see if I can get the name and tweet it to well, you. I don't have Prime, so yeah, but it'd be interesting to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was you. a couple of years ago they did that, but it was interesting. It was it was a bit more realistic, I think. Anyway. <laughs> um, Thank you. Finally, uh, Kirsty says, Nina, I wonder if anime and manga might be good sources. Quick search on Anime yeah. Planet has two pages of listings of female engineers. Yes, I do have and some lists of those, but um, in. I, I tried to stick to things that were sort of more easily got a grip on. I, I don't know enough about. I would have to. I would have to consult my children if I was going to get into the manga arena. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Good. I think. I think that's everything. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Brilliant. Uh, again, we're we're coming up to the last session of the day and we're still on time so well done everybody running like, running like clockwork and thank you so much Nina for your contribution today it's lovely to hear from you